Hi, in this video we're going to look at the topic of computer architecture, which basically means how the CPU and the, the RAM work inside a computer. And we'll also talk about the fetch to code execute cycle. This video is mainly aimed at students of the IGCSE course, uh, and this is point, uh, specification point 1.3.2. Point point but a lot of the content here applies to any GCSE in computer science. So we're going to have a series of questions, and I would encourage you to pause the video and then see if you can answer the question and then unpause to, to see whether you got the answer right. So first of all, what is the stored program concept? So if you'd like to pause now. Okay, so let's have a look at the answers. Um, so this most of these answers are taken straight from past GCSE questions. So th this is how the exam board expects you to answer. So program instructions and data are both stored in the main memory. That's the key point, really, with the store program concept. Um, the title here, Von Neumann Architecture. So you may have heard about this already. There was a guy called John Von Neumann, uh, and he and his colleagues had the idea that we could store, rather than having the program separate, maybe on punch cards or maybe through having to flick switches on and off to, to program an old computer, they had the idea that we could store the program along with the data in the, in the same memory. Um, which is like the RAM in a modern computer. Um, and just a second point, that instructions are fetched and executed one after the other from the memory. OK, so just to visualize that, here's a, a stick of RAM that you would see inside a, a computer these days. We can think of that in terms of um, addresses and then the actual data stored within those addresses. So in address 0, we've got this binary number here. Now that could be an instruction. It might mean something like add 3, or it could be just a big binary number, a, an 8-bit uh, or 1-byte binary number. Uh, and the same, obviously, for e each one here. OK, moving on. Question 2. Can you describe the stages of the fetch to code execute cycle? So pause again, try and write down the answer, and then see if you get it right. OK, so let's look at the answer. So the fetch part, it basically means an instruction is passed from the memory to the CPU. Um, so fairly straightforward. Decode, the CPU works out the meaning of the instruction. Execute, the CPU carries out the instruction. And important to remember that that is a cycle. It repeats. It, it doesn't just happen once. That, that's constantly looping around, repeating. OK. Third question. Can you name the five registers found in the CPU? Let's look at the answers now. So we've got the program counter. That, that you often see these abbreviated in exam questions. So PC is program counter, the memory address register, memory data register, current instruction register, and the accumulator. So those are the five components that we're expected to know about in IGCSE. And leading on from that, can you explain the purpose of each of those registers? So pause again now. And let's look at the answers. So the program counter, here's the, the sort of expected definition from the exam board. It contains the address of the next instruction to be fetched. So you've got to watch out. Just because it's called program counter, don't assume that it counts programs. That, that's a common mistake uh, in exam answers. Um, what it's all about is, is we always need to keep track of where we're up to in a program. If you think back to that diagram we saw before, we've got a series of memory addresses. We always need to store the next one we're going to look at. So that is the job of the program counter, just to store the address of the next instruction. It will never hold any data or values. It will just hold addresses. So moving on from that, we've got the memory address register. This contains the address of the current instruction to be fetched. So again, watch out that you, you can see the difference between the two. Memory address register is the current instruction, so the one we are working on at the moment, whereas the program counter is the, the one after that, the next instruction. Okay, We'll see in a minute how those two work together. Then we have the memory data register that contains the instruction or data after it is fetched from the main memory. So that's like a temporary place to store it once we've fetched it and just before we decode it. We copy the value from the MDR, the memory data register, into the current instruction register. 
and you know the, the name is pretty clear on this one what it does so it contains the the instruction that we're currently working on uh, the, the thing that's about to be decoded and then the fifth one is the accumulator so this is the one that it stores the results of calculations um, the ALU is a, a separate component really. it's not not really a register so arithmetic logic unit so that's where all the addition and multiplication and subtraction is carried out and the logic part is things like comparisons so greater than and less than uh, comparisons for example or it could be um, boolean logic so and or and not so once something has been calculated the result of that gets stored in the accumulator okay so here's a little diagram let's just run through a quick uh, example so we let's say we've got the program counter could store the value zero because that's the address of the, the instruction to look at next it copies that over to the memory address register so at this point but they'll both have the same thing in them um, that tells us where to fetch the data or instruction from in the RAM the data is loaded into the memory data register copied into the current instruction register and if we need to do some kind of calculation the ALU will calculate it and store it in the accumulator so these these pink shapes are the five key registers that we need to be aware of okay we'll come back to this diagram with another question in a minute so next of all can you name the three system buses time to pause again and let's see if you got those right uh, and before we look at the three here's just a, a very simple animation just to give you the idea that a bus really is just a, a set of wires connecting two components together I've deliberately not labeled the boxes here because uh, it could apply to lots of different things but it's just about some data or address or instruction being sent along a number of wires in a real computer there would be maybe 32 or 64 um, parallel wires like this uh, but that's just a little example so when we're talking about a bus that's all it means really so we've got the three are the address bus the data bus and the control bus so as I said these are just a set of wires going from one component to another now more importantly can you describe the role of those three different buses time to pause again and let's see if you got those right so first of all the address bus carries the address of the next item to be fetched and um, so when we are um, going from the memory address register to go and look in a certain address we'll use the address bus and it's also important to note that's a one directional bus there will never be a case where the memory is using the address bus to um, communicate with the CPU it's always a one way from the CPU to the memory okay so like in this little animation if this was maybe the memory address register it's sending an address to the RAM where we need to look for a value secondly we've got the data bus again with these in the exam as long as you know you, you can uh, as long as you've got the answer written of what the bus is it's hopefully helps you describe what it does so the address bus will only ever carry addresses in the same way the data bus will only ever carry the actual data and um, as we've said before the data could be instructions or it could just be numbers uh, so it carries the data that has been or will be processed this one can go in two directions because we might be loading data from the RAM to the CPU or we might be storing a number that we've just calculated into the memory so it's two directional and last of all we've got the control bus so this carries control signals that direct the actions of the CPU you can think of the control bus as coordinating everything that goes on um, so it sends little signals to the components maybe to get them to function at the right time uh, tell them whether they're loading or saving or things like that uh, but that, that's the key definition it sends control signals that direct the actions of the CPU this one uh, I don't think you get asked but it can be one way or, or two way depending what it's doing okay so back to our little example here and um, the address buses I've added in now to the diagram so anything in red is where an address is being moved from place to place so as we said the program counter transfers or copies its value into the memory address register and then we go along the address bus to look in that particular address the data so this side here the instruction or data gets passed along the data bus back to the CPU and its first point to be stored is the memory data register it 
also gets copied into the current instruction register and we may have that interaction with the accumulator if we need to um, be calculating things with the ALU and there's our control bus so you can see the blue lines added in between the components here this isn't a perfect diagram this is just a, a representation of something that's obviously much more complicated in real life uh, but to get that idea of the control unit being able to send out control signals to coordinate what all the components do okay next question can you describe the stages of the fetch decode execute cycle including the use of registers and buses now before you answer this one uh, bear in mind in, in the exam i think you, it would be unlikely that they would just ask a question as open as this where you had to recall all the facts but i think it's good practice for you to do it and um, more likely in the igcse this would be a question where you were maybe drawing lines between definitions and keywords or maybe um, putting a, a series of things into the right order that kind of thing uh, but if you if you're confident enough to answer the whole thing then you'll find questions like that much easier so have a go can you can you run through the whole process I, I've done it a couple of times already in this video uh, fairly quickly so can you try and name in detail what goes on stage by stage in the fetch decode execute cycle time to pause again okay let's look at that in detail now so the first step is that the program counter, program counter holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. And from there, the address is copied into the MAR, the memory address register, uh, using the address bus like we just saw. Thirdly, the program counter is incremented. That, by that, we just mean we add one to it um, so that it will store the next at the address of the next instruction rather than the current one that we're working on. Then we have the instruction at the address held in the memory address register is copied into the memory data register. So we're, we're going to see this in a moment looking at the diagram again if, if that one's a bit unclear. Then we have the instruction from the MDR, the memory data register, copied into the CIR, the current instruction register. And at this point, uh, it kind of depends what the instruction was what happens here but um, this is this order I've got again from a past exam question so the address part of the instruction in the current instruction register is placed into the MAR the memory address register and then the instruction is now decoded and executed so let's look at that process on a diagram again I've taken all those points here to the left and we'll just see them with a little animation so first of all there's the program counter holding the address 000 so that's going to go and look in this address in a minute uh, so secondly the address is copied from the program counter along our address bus into the memory address register okay so that's the first two stages done and then the program counter is incremented so we're just going to add one to this value here it's a little bit unclear at what point this happens but the exam board are quite generous on that they don't mind where you put that this point in the process as long as it happens after we've copied the original value here to me it makes sense to do it straight away so we don't forget so that's why I've put that as point three um, in this process okay and then this is the one that looked a bit more complex just in terms of words so the instruction at the address held in the MAR so in other words look at this address here zero 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 and find the data that's stored in that address so it's a bit like um, you know a postal address it each of these addresses on the right hand side has a unique number um, so we're going to go and look in that address find the data that's stored in there and then copy that into the memory data register remembering this part is the data this part is the addresses so let's just do that I'm going to use green always to represent the data and red to represent the addresses fifth point the instruction in the MDR is copied into the CIR so from the memory data register to the current instruction register and then the sixth one the address part of the instruction in the CIR is placed in the MAR along the address bus so if you've looked at anything like the little man computer you, you might have come across the idea that part of the number is probably an instruction code so these four digits here might mean something like load or add or store and the last four digits could be an address so you can see in this example 0011 is this address here 
So this whole instruction might be an instruction for um, loading whatever's in that address into the accumulator, for example. So what we're doing here is copying that address part into the memory address register because that's what we need to access next. Now notice at this point we've got a different number in the memory address register and the program counter. So just if you were a bit unclear about the difference between the two, that, that hopefully is, is more clear now that that program counter is ready to tell us where to go for our next instruction, which is here, while the memory address register is being used to load in some particular data for whatever's being calculated at the moment. Okay, so at that point the instruction the instruction has been decoded and executed. One last thing to point out, uh, if we had a, a value in the accumulator at this point, let's say some calculation had happened and we'd stored the answer in here, it may be that we need to store that value into the RAM. So that would happen by sending the value along the data bus into the MDR so again, we'd end up with a different number in here to the, the value in the current instruction register. And that, that value or that number could then be sent along the data bus and stored in a particular location. So we might have an instruction which says store in location 8. And what that would do is take the number from the accumulator, transfer it to the MDR. It would have to give it, have the address ready where to go as well. So these two components work together the address being sent along the address bus, the data being sent along the data bus, and stored in a particular place, uh, a particular address in the RAM. Okay, so a quick summary. We've talked about the von Neumann architecture, which is also known as the stored program concept. So the idea of storing the program and the data in the same memory of the computer, and then fetching those instructions one by one. We've talked about the fetch to code execute cycle, um, and we've looked at that in detail, so that's that cycle that's constantly looping and repeating in the CPU. We should be able to name the five key registers and explain what they do, they, what their purpose is. And then we have the three different buses to be aware of as well. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Um, that's about it for this video. I'll be uploading some more, hopefully very soon.